Hello everyone, I'm the Walrus Clown and welcome to Walrus Reviews! And I'll review anything, it may be cartoon, a comic, or a movie, you don't know! And finding out is half the fun! Today we'll be looking at an underrated Netflix original series about ghosts, monsters, and stopping the end of the world, Legend Quest. Honor, roll the intro please! Yeah, I should probably mention it now, but there's going to be spoilers. Anywho, Honor, roll the intro please! <laughs> Legend Quest is a Mexican animated horror comedy spoof that was produced by Anima Studios and premiered worldwide on Netflix on February 24th, 2017. And now for the plot. A boy named Leo who can see ghosts ends up on the adventure of a lifetime as he ends up world trotting and time hopping to stop the return of Quetzalcoatlus and save his hometown from ruin after Quetzalcoatlus sucks it and all of his friends and loved ones into his dark dimension and prevent him from going all Evangelion on us and destroying the world. With the help of his two ghost friends Theodora and Don Andreas and their mythical creature comic relief sidekick Alabrihe the Alabrihe now must trot the planet looking for members of the Brotherhood and trying to find a way to stop Quetzalcoatlus and his minions the world over along the way. Well, now that technicals are out of the way, let me say that I adore this cartoon and its characters and while a bit flawed, and you might want to download this video and keep it for prosperity because you are never going to hear me say this again, but the flaws actually add to the show's charm. First, the show's strong points, the mythology, the characters, and the story. Starting with the mythology, all of Quetzalcoatlus' minions come from real-world mythology, and I'm not just talking about your standard vampires, werewolves, and the ilk. They dig deep and use Baba Yaga as his general, the Jersey Devil attacking New Jersey, and they even have a few that even I haven't heard of, like the Vodnik. And I'm a hardcore mythology nut who loves monsters. Now for the story and settings. I simply can't praise how this show's storytelling works enough. Something tells me that the writers might be Whovians because, while all episodes seem to be your standard Saturday morning standalone monster of the week, every episode helps build to an ultimate conclusion. And they don't skimp on the dark stuff either, like the Greek episode Ghost of Medusa, where they meet the ghosts of everyone who died in Pompeii and it's revealed that the ghost of Medusa can turn the ghosts to stone, and they turn to dust when hit by sunlight. Thus, their very souls stop existing. Now for our main characters, starting with Leo. Being the head main character amongst the main characters, he is appointed the chosen one to stop Quetzalcoatlus because of a prophecy. He's a bit easy to get frustrated, can be a bit on the sensitive side, and can be very bullheaded once he's made up his mind, but he is clearly the smart one of the group, and de facto team leader seeing how he's the chosen one as told by prophecy. <laughs> the next character I want to talk about is the girl that was added to the main cast halfway through the series in Leo's love interest, Marcella. In the beginning we see that the town fears her and her mother, labeling them as witches which her mother technically is, and thus making Marcella an unwilling magic user because she inherits her mother's magic when she dies, which comes into play later. Marcella gets sucked into Quetzalcoatlus' dark dimension with the rest of the town, only for Team Legend to use the Tree of Yggdrasil to go there to steal the Quetzalcoatlus stoppling MacGuffin and manage to rescue her in the process. While her ability to use magic is never really brought up after the initial episode where we find out because she inherited it from her mother and never really learned how to use it, we see that she is a bit of a tomboy and athletic to the point where she's more reliable in a fight than Leo is. After her, we have the fan favorite character, the ghost girl, Teodora. The main problem I see turning a lot of people off to the show is the fact that the show takes place during the 1800s and she has a cell phone on her. They do eventually explain the cell phone, and in fact, the foreshadowing is so thick that most people older than 8 should be able to piece it together themselves by Act 1 of Episode 3 to the point where I'm not spoiling anything by saying it. She's not really dead. She's a girl from our time in a coma that's astral projecting herself into the past. Bum, 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 dramatic reverb. And now for the other two, Don Andreas and Alabrije the Alabrije, starting with Donny Boy. Don Andreas is a world traveling conquistador barber who died back during the times when the local barber was also the doctor. He really doesn't do much outside of being the adult and a coward, which is used to extreme comedic effect. 
The funny looks he gets from the rest of the main cast after he says that he could have died really bring some much needed comedic levity to the darker segments, which leaves us with the final character, Alabrihe. And I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Alabrihe is my favorite character in the show. He's a mythical creature that's made up specifically for the show and based on Latin American sculptures of the same name. He's clearly sentient, but also clearly an animal. He can smell magic and has, at least by human standards, superhuman strength, speed, and the ability to fly and magically takes on the form of a random animal to normal humans. And like almost anything else that I give a positive review to, it would have been so easy to make this character annoying. But they didn't. He's less like a Johnny Test character and more like my parents' dog, Spike, if he could talk and had a bluntly sarcastic edge to him. But speaking of Johnny Test, we come to the part of the review where I go over my problems with the show, as few of them as there are. First is the character design. The character design is so blocky that you could put them into the background of any Johnny Test episode and they would fit right in. How dare you criticize the character design of Legend Crust Adder Adder! Oh, hey everyone, it's Otter the Sea Otter. Haven't seen you on screen since the Rarity Investigates review, link in the description. What's this about my criticism of the character design not being valid? Have you seen the directed DVD movie series this is meant to be a reboot of? Here, take a look at Alabrihe, Adder Adder! Oh my god. It's as if the Jerkophosaurus from South Park did the nasty with a giraffe. Then it grew up and did a frog while drunk in Tijuana. I am so sorry. Anywho, now for the second of my three gripes. In the first episode, we find out only certain chosen ones like Leo can see spirits and the true forms of Alabrihes. And in episode 2, this concept is dropped for the sake of the plot. Then in episode 3, no one but Leo can see them again. Then by episode 5, the only Leo can see spirits thing is dropped for good and is never brought up again. It's very inconsistent. Could have used another rewrite to tighten up the concept before sending the series into production is all I'm saying. And now for my final and biggest gripe with the series. We have no information about when Season 2 is coming out. And in fact, from what I could dig up, Legend Quest is in the same neither cancelled nor renewed production limbo that the Disney cartoon Dave the Barbarian has been in for over a decade now. Which really irks me to no end because the final act of the final episode promised us more. And I want more. I implore anyone in my audience with a Netflix subscription to go watch it, then give it a high star count, then maybe Netflix will finally throw us a bone or something and give us a release date for season two. Well, that's it for this review. A new episode of The Potamus where he tells you about mythology is up next, then another review. Stay tuned to find out what. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell. See you next time, everyone! Oh, man.